Good evening. Good evening, sisters and brothers, and uh, welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Uh, today, the 1st of December, Tuesday evening. Tuesday, the 1st of December, and um, I trust that you are well and you are able to join us this evening to say goodbye to this Tuesday, this first day in the final month of the year. And, um, and we give God thanks for keeping us and sustaining us and for giving, giving us traveling mercies for all those who are traveling today. And we are grateful to God for his grace, for his blessing, for his, his goodness to us. Let's, let's pray. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of light and darkness. To you be glory and praise forever. As evening falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. May your word be a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path, that we may behold your coming among us. Strengthen us in our stumbling weakness and free our tongues to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. <clears throat> And the canticle, which is a hymn, creator of the stars of night, thy people's everlasting light. O Jesus, Savior of us all, regard thy servants when they call. Thou grieving at the bitter cry of all creation doomed to die, didst come to save a ruined race with healing gifts of heavenly grace. Thou camest bridegroom of the bride, as drew the world to evening tide, proceeding from a virgin shrine, the Son of Man, yet Lord divine. At thy great name exalted now, all knees must bend, all hearts must bow, and things in heaven and earth shall own that thou art Lord and King alone. To thee, O Holy One, we pray, our judge in that tremendous day. Preserve us while we dwell below from every onslaught of the foe. All praise, eternal Son, to thee, whose advent sets thy people free. Whom with the Father we adore, and Spirit blessed forevermore. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the Collect. Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening, and day is drawing to a close. Abide with us and with your whole church. In the evening of the day, in the evening of life, in the evening of the world, Abide with us and with all your faithful ones, O Lord, in time and in eternity. Amen. <coughs> and our evening confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts, we have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. 
and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. <clears throat> and our psalm this evening is Psalm uh, 74. Psalm 7, 74. Psalm 74. Let's have some tea. refreshing. <clears throat> Psalm 74. O oh God, why have you rejected us forever? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pasture? Remember the nation you purchased long ago, the tribe of your inheritance whom you redeemed, Mount Zion, where you dwelt. Turn your steps toward these everlasting ruins. All this destruction the enemy has brought on the sanctuary. Your foes roared in the place where you met with us. They set up their standards as signs. They behaved like men wielding axes to cut through a thicket of trees. They smashed all the carved paneling with their axes and hatchets. They burned your sanctuary to the ground. They defiled the dwelling place of your name. They said in their hearts, we will crush them completely. They burned every place where God was worshipped in the land. <clears throat> we are given no signs from God, no prophets are left, and none of us knows how long this will be. How long will the enemy mock you, God? Will the foe revile your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand, your right hand? Take it from the foes of your garment and destroy them. <laughs> but God is my king from long ago. He brings salvation upon the earth. It, <laughs> I love this bit. You know? It was you who split open the sea by your power. You broke the heads of the monster in the waters. It was you who crushed the heads of the Leviathan and gave it as food to the creatures of the desert. It was you who opened up springs and streams. You dried up the ever-flowing rivers. The day is yours and yours also the night. You established the sun and the moon. It was you who set all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Remember how the enemy has mocked you, Lord. How foolish people have reviled your name. Do not hand over the life of your dove to wild beasts. Do not forget the lives of your afflicted people forever. Have regard for your covenant, because haunts of violence fill the dark places of the land. Do not let the oppressed retreat in disgrace. May the poor and needy praise your name. Rise up, O God, and defend your cause. Remember how fools mock you all day long. Do not ignore the clamor of your adversaries, the uproar of your enemies, which rises continually. Amen. I love this psalm because it, it, it is unashamedly saying to God, wake up. <laughs> Come on, God. And don't let your enemies mock you. Don't let your enemies revile you. Don't let them... Um, destroy your temple. Notice the first one, the first verse, first eight verses really are about how God's enemies are destroying the temple and they smashed all the carved paneling and panelings and, and burned the sanctuary to the ground and so forth. And so the psalmist is saying, God, get up, come on, do something. Uh, and, and a bit that I love where, where I smiled Whenever I read this, this psalm, I smiled about this because two places 
in, in the very end, verse 22, rise up, O God. It's like, wake up. Come on, do something. Rise up and defend your cause, God. And, um, and, and of course, verse, um, verse 11, why do you hold back your hand, your right hand? Take it from the folds of your garment and destroy them. <laughs> is that great? God, take your hand out your pocket and do something. You know, this, this, is, a, this is an amazing way to talk to God. And it would be blasphemy if it wasn't prayer. <laughs> this is the psalmist lamenting, bringing. It's, it's that feeling that the psalmist has. You know, the, 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 you, you think if the psalmist feels this way about the name of God, how could God feel? How else could God feel about his own name being trampled down, his temple being destroyed and so forth? So, all right, I'll, um, and, and, and he's calling upon God to remember his covenant. Remember, Lord, how the enemy have mocked you. We have regard for your covenant, verse 20. Have regard for your covenant. Remember the covenant, the relationship you have with your people. Don't let them destroy them. Sometimes, sisters and brothers, we've got to pray like this. You know, sometimes our prayers are too nice. We've got to scream at God, talk to him, tell him exactly what's in our hearts, because he already knows. It's not like we can hide it. All right. Uh, Praying complete uh, collapse. Uh, Keller. Now the psalmist begins to process this disaster in prayer. This is the disaster of the temple and the destruction of Jerusalem. There are two things he does not do. He does not passively resign himself to the evil status quo. But neither does he angrily turn away from God, assuming he knows better. Instead, he expresses his sorrow and complaints, but always toward God. He remembers that God has all power. He's saying, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. If we believe in God, only when he is doing good things for us, we are not really serving him. We are only using him. I, I do like this, um, this meditation from Keller because... It says he has, there are two ways you could respond to, to the destruction around you. One, you passively resign yourself and say, there's nothing we can do. Uh, you put your hand up in the air and said, uh, you know, it's all hopeless. And then the other way is to turn away from God and to say, if God exists, why does he allow this? If God exists, why would he do this? And you become, you become an atheist, you become faithless. But the psalmist doesn't do that. The psalmist turned to God in prayer. Because, Lord, you alone have the words of eternal life. And so, Lord, in, your, in dark times, I feel I get little out of going to the throne of grace in prayer sometimes. But give me strength to go and stay there nonetheless until I hear from you. Amen. All right, the reading this evening is uh, Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, from verse 22 to 37. Yes, 22 to 37, Matthew chapter 12. When they brought him a de then they brought him a demon possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him so that he could he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, "Could this be the son of David?" But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, "It is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons." Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, 
by whom do your people drive them out? If so, they will be judged. They will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man and he can rob his house? He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. And so I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, and the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Make a tree good and its fruit will be good, or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you, you who are evil, say anything good? For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that men will have will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. All right, this is, of course, uh, Jesus' I could say enigmatic, mysterious teaching on the what we have come to know as the, 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 the unpardonable sin the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And, um, and I mean, it's a simple matter. I mean, it, I say simple. It, it's, it's simple because if you understand the nature of the Holy Spirit, it, it, Jesus said, uh, the first bit he said actually, is that you can do anything to the Son of Man and you will be forgiven. You can say all kind of blasphemy against Jesus, you will be forgiven. I, I think we need to remain there just for a moment, sisters and brothers. Imagine that. Imagine the generosity and the graciousness of God. Jesus said, you can, you can say all sorts of blasphemy against the name of Jesus and you'll be forgiven. You can, you, he says, any sin you commit against, this, against Jesus himself, the Son of Man, you'll be forgiven. You'll be forgiven. If you ask for forgiveness, you will be forgiven. However, he says, there's one sin you cannot be forgiven of, and that is the sin against the Holy Spirit. Now, why would that be? What is the sin against the Holy Spirit? Well, the sin against the Holy Spirit is, is the sin of disregarding the Holy Spirit. Let's put it this way. The only way we can be forgiven is if the Holy Spirit prompts our hearts for repentance. In other words, you're not going to be forgiven unless you ask for repentance, unless you say, I'm sorry. Yeah? So if you, you, could, you could blaspheme the name of Jesus, but the Holy Spirit will prompt your heart and you will, you will be forgiven because you will say, I'm sorry, I really, I, I, I repent. So forgiveness requires repentance, just to, in, in, from Jesus' point of view, to be forgiven requires that you repent, okay? However, if you sin against the Holy Spirit, if you, if you um, disregard the work of the Holy Spirit, there is no repentance for you. How do you know? Because you will have no desire to repent. And this is what the point is with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who prompts you to repent. But if you have no desire to repent, then you will never be forgiven. Because if you have no desire for God, then you will never want God and you will never seek God. And, the, and so the, the blasphemy, the, the unpardonable sin, is the sin against the Spirit because the Spirit alone is the one who can bring you forgiveness so when you when you speak against the spirit when you 
when you do things that are that 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 puts the Holy Spirit in disrepute, as it were, blaspheme the Holy Spirit. In other words, when you disregard the work of the Holy Spirit and you treat the Holy Spirit as if it's a demon spirit, like they did when Jesus was casting out demons, then you will never be forgiven. Why will you never be forgiven? Because you will never want to be forgiven. You will never have a desire to be forgiven because it's the Holy Spirit that prompts us to be forgiven. Okay? So the sin against the Holy Spirit is the sin to, to blaspheme his name in such a way that you don't want to have anything to do with God at all. Which is why if somebody's, if somebody's concerned that they have committed this sin, it's very likely that they have not. <laughs> because a person who commits this sin would not care less if they have or not. Because for them, the whole, because the Holy Spirit is the only one who will prompt our hearts to turn to God. And if, the, if, if you have a desire to worship God, if you have a desire to repent, if you have a desire to turn to God, you have not committed the unpardonable sin. All right, let's pray. Let's, let's bring the day before the Lord. <clears throat> Today, of course, is Tuesday, and we pray for the elderly and the, those who are isolated and vulnerable. Lord, we, we echo God's commitment to those most at risk of this virus, and we pray today for them, particularly the vulnerable and those who are isolated. We pray for their deliverance, their protection, and their comfort. Lord, we hold them before you because we know you care for them. We pray especially for those elderly members of our community. Think of um, Joanna and uh, remember Walter and Jean and, and Monica as well. Those in the nursing home, and those who are unable to come out. We ask, Lord, that you protect them. We pray for Jean Murphy as well. And Lord, that you keep her safe, especially from this deadly virus and other members of our church, Dorothy, and, um, and all those, Lord, who are older members of our community, especially those who are isolated. We pray for those who are vulnerable as well. Think, think of Pauline and, um, and others who might feel vulnerable. Think of uh, Angela as well, especially during this difficult time. Lord, we bring them to you, and we ask for your mercy upon them, and for all that you strengthen them, protect them, Give them comfort and give them the deliverance that they need in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we come to the end of the day and we want to say thank you for sustaining us, keeping us. And we ask, Lord, that you will strengthen us for tonight. Be our help tonight, Lord, we pray. And um, hear us as we cry out to you tonight like the psalmist. Remember your covenant, Lord, and hear us and come to the rescue of your people, especially during this difficult time of coronavirus. Come and save us, Lord, we pray. Be our savior, even as we look to Christmas the, 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 and celebrate the birth of our savior, the birth of our redeemer, our rescuer, our deliverer. Lord, you are all these things, so come, we pray. Not just rescue us, of course, from sin and death, which is, which is of supreme value, we ask, Lord, that you'll rescue us from the temporal problems that we go through today in this day. The virus, the, the lockdown, the, the isolation, the, the mental illness and, and, and physical illness and, and all these other things. We ask, Lord, for your deliverance. We ask for your salvation. And we continue to pray for those that are on our prayer list. Remember, uh, Maxine's sister, Constance, and his son in Canada, Mr. Gray, who's, who lost his brother recently. We pray for Dorothea and John, and we ask, Lord, that you guide them and keep them in your, in your grace at this time. We pray for uh, Glennis and Claire up in Upminster. We ask for God's grace upon them and the family. Uh, we pray for Vida, Vida in Grenada, Glennis's mom. And Lord, we pray that uh, that you'll give her the comfort she needs, Lord, during these these days. And Lord, we pray that you'll be there for Vida. Remind her, Lord, especially at this time, that 
She's never alone. You are always with her because you promised that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And especially now, during the, these last days, Lord, we pray that you will uh, be there with her during the darkness and the suffering and the pain. Be there, Lord, with her to reveal your light to her, Lord Jesus, during this time. And pray for, pray for Glennis and Ambrose and the family that you'll strengthen them and give them your grace during this difficult time. And be there for Glennis, Lord, to, uh, Lord, give her your grace, your comfort, your peace during this difficult time. Lord, we pray for, um, we continue to pray for Auntie Janie and, and Tavern. And we also pray for Tavern's wife, Sel Selima, and uh, Tavern's mom, Selvi, as well. And so, Lord, we bring these to you, and we ask, Lord, that you will intervene in their lives and bring, and bring your grace and your mercy. And, um, and so, Lord, in your, in your mercy, hear our prayer for all your people today, tonight. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace, his comfort, and his blessing tonight, sisters and brothers, as you rest in him. Amen. Have a good night, one and all.